All right, you guys. Here's the graph. Find the values of g of 2 and g of negative 2. So if this is the function, doesn't that 2 just go for x? Which means there's a 2 going for x right there. And for g of negative 2, don't I just put negative 2 there and negative 2 there? So look at the answers here. g of 2, I plug in the 2, so isn't this just saying, find the area of f, isn't that f? From 1 to 2. So the area of this little piece right there. So that's it. Area is base times height. That's a one half. It's kind of hard to see that. Okay, why is it negative? Because it's below the x axis. Now, the other one, if you're going from one to negative two, isn't that interval backwards? So you switch it, make it a negative. So now we're going from one to negative two. So now we're doing all this area. Now, that right there is a radius of 1. I'm doing half of it. So pi r squared, half of that. That's where you get that. The reason it's negative is it's under the x-axis. This triangle, the area that's 3 divided by 2, base times height divided by 2. That's a positive. So you see the positive 3 over 2 minus the pi over 2. And it's negative because it went the opposite of that. And they just left it like this. There's no calculator on this problem. Okay, um, so, actually there is a calculator, wait, no, there is no calculator. So, that's how you find g's. Now, if I want g prime, negative 3, and g double prime, negative 3, here's what you want to do. You want to look at this right here. If I want g prime, what you need to know is that g prime equals f of x. Because when I derive g, you derive this. Take the derivative of this. The derivative of this is called the second fundamental theorem of calculus. You simply plug that x in for t. This becomes f of x. So g prime is equal to f of x. Right there. Huge. So wouldn't g double prime equal to f prime? That's a huge, huge building block. The whole problem is based upon this little thing right here. Huge. You want to write that and, and look back to that all the time. So this is f, but isn't this also g prime? This graph is g prime. You got to get your brain wrapped around that. That's the slope function for g. So if I want g prime negative 3, don't you just simply want that coordinate right there? That's what they did right there, 2. If I want g double prime negative 3, doesn't want the slope at that point. Got it? Because you're taking the derivative, so you're wanting the slope at negative 3. The slope, see f prime negative 3? So is it, what's the slope there? Well, could you go rise over run to find that slope of that line? Alright. Um, if you want to find the x-coordinate um, of each point for which you have a horizontal tangent line of g, horizontal tangent lines mean it's where g prime equals 0, correct? And as we talked about earlier, isn't g prime equal to f of x? So aren't we just asking where this function is 0? And isn't that right here and here? Are those my two horizontal tangent line situations? All right, that was easy. For each of these points, so for negative 1 and 1, determine what it is and justify. Well, determine what this is, well... I know the derivative is 0 there. Don't you have to see if the slopes then change from positive to negative or negative to positive? Now, here's the crazy thing is, if this is g prime, this is a slope value, so what are these values up here? Aren't they positive? So aren't my g primes positive here and negative here? Does it mean it's going from increasing to decreasing? So wasn't this b a max? Aren't my values negative and then negative again? Negative, negative means there's no change of g prime. Remember, this is g prime. It's hard to remember. This function is g prime. You might want to go like, this is g prime x, scratch. <laughs> okay, if you have to do that, do that. I don't want to do that, but... Okay, make sure you know this is g prime x. So we know now 
that this is neither and this is a, we said max, right? Now let's look what they did, how they wrote it. They first wrote that equals zero at these two points. Then they said g prime changes sign from positive to negative at this point. And then, so g is a maximum, relative maximum. And g double prime does not change signs at one, so it is neither. Now, be careful you put the word g prime, change of signs, or remember you could also put g of x is increasing to decreasing. Goes from increasing to decreasing. You could also say g of x goes from decreasing to decreasing. I think it's both negative, right? I think it's decreasing to decreasing. You could use that. Just be careful. Be specific what function we're dealing with. You could also do it in terms of f, couldn't you? Because isn't g prime f? But that might be confusing. I probably wouldn't do that. All right. Find the point of inflections and explain. Well, points of inflections, aren't we looking for where g double prime x equals zero or does not exist. And if this is g prime, aren't we looking where the slopes of this graph is zero or does not exist? So is that where it does not exist, the slope? Does the slope not exist there? Not e is zero there and not existent there, so there's four spots we'd check into. And then so those would all be g prime, zero does not exist. Then don't we have to also check that it actually changes value to g double prime? Okay. You have to change that g double prime changes values, which basically means the slopes change. So we go from positive to negative, that's a point of inflection. We go from negative to negative, that's nothing. We go from negative slope to positive slope, that's a point of inflection. We go from positive slope to negative slope, that's a point of inflection. Let's see how they say it. Okay, the graph is the point of inflection at those three points, which we talked about, because g double prime equals f prime changes signs at each of these values. I'm kind of shocked they don't say that g double prime equals zero are defined, but I guess they're assuming, if you say they change values, that assume they were zero and defined at that point as well. If it was me, I would have put that g double prime equals zero does not exist as well. I would add that to the description. Is that okay? Because that is still being thorough. But I guess they're implying it, and I trust these guys because they wrote the test.